Mike D'Andrea sending you a video to welcome you to the 2021 Main Lightning season. Um, I want you all to know that we're really excited about the upcoming season. We've been working hard with rosters, new coaches, placement. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of work. However, it's, it's work that we enjoy here and we're excited to kick off our winter training season and our, our expected kickoff date for that is going to be three and a half weeks from now. So I believe it is November 8th. Um, that is still tentative, but um, that's what we're shooting for, November 8th. That does give us our complete full winter training season in that dome, which you know, in our minds is one of the best facilities in the state of Maine. So add that adjacent to the Edge Academy and our cages, our facilities are unmatched. So we're excited to offer that up again. We're excited to kick off the 2021 season um, and it's, it's here. I'm gonna start out by talking about the COVID-19 situation with Maine Lightning Baseball. Currently, we are at the number of 50 or less in our facility. It doesn't change what we do in here a whole lot, meaning we can still get our teams in the cages, in the dome, as usual. However, the one shift is going to be parents will not be allowed in the facility due to the fact that we will go over in allowed numbers. We are allowed 50 and it will put us over the top. So between players and coaches, this year we're going to ask that parents drop off and pick up. Um, that is obviously a new shift for everybody. Um, we will communicate weekly as to how that's going. And Ryan Cox is going to share our extensive COVID-19 safety plan for 2021. For this year and until we get further notice from the state and the CDC, our COVID plan is going to be followed as strict as possible. We're going to have entrance through the main entrance like we always do. We're going to have an exit through the gym. The EPI is going to be shut down until January 1st at the earliest. Um, it, it's something that we have to do in order to keep the capacity at limit for us in here with the training. We will have hand sanitizer stations throughout the entire facility um, and the dome will have the same. We are going to encourage players to wash hands and use hand sanitizer and make sure that they are social distancing as much as possible. We're also going to require players and coaches and staff to wear face masks at all time. If your player has a, a condition that really inhibits that such as asthma, please let us know and we will have to direct to the CDC and see what their recommendations are for indoor training. So one of the changes that we'll have this year is going to be a drop-off only type scenario with practices. We're going to ask that the players arrive 10 to 5 minutes before practice but wait inside the cars in the parking lot until about 2, maybe 1 minute before your practice slot. What we're trying to avoid is a jam bottleneck situation when we're trying to make a transition for new teams coming in and new players going out. Again, this is going to be part of our safety plan that we're gonna move forward with, uh, but we are restricted to 50, 50 people in the building, as well as the dome. The dome is the same restrictions that we have, so we need to do our best to make sure that we can do our part in helping out and making sure that we're not over capacity at any given time. In regards to safety standards and COVID and what we're dealing with today, if your player has any signs or symptoms that are listed on the CDC recommendations or guidelines, and we will send out those guidelines uh, at the beginning of practices so we all know that we're all on the same page. If your son is showing any of those signs, we ask that you err on the side of caution and remove the player from practice that week and just allow us uh, an email that, that says, hey, Johnny's not feeling well tonight. We won't be at practice tonight. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate that. We understand that not every illness is a COVID-related uh, issue, but we do want to err on the side of caution, especially in the early goings with the lightning practices.
Parents, what you can expect from Mainlining Baseball 2021 is the same as what you could expect from it last year and the year before. We're going to provide a professional environment, a learning, teaching, professional environment that allows your son to improve. We have the best facility, we have the best coaching staff in the state of Maine, and we take a lot of pride in how we deliver our information. So developing skills is, number, is our top priority, our number one priority, and we have spent time developing that curriculum. We will position, train again for the first half of winter training, meaning primary position, secondary position. So if your son is a pitcher, shortstop, great. One week he'll pitch, the next week he will go to shortstop. We do have some changes that we're gonna to try to implement this year. If, they, if it falls into our safety plan, allows us to perform and, and, and add these new adjustments into our winter training, we will. I don't wanna share those yet because I'm not sure due to numbers it can happen, but we are always looking to improve. We have made some shifts. We, again, I'm very proud of the coaching staff that we've put together here at Maine Lightning. We also have several college coaches that will be training in our facility, uh, working with Maine Lightning. So, uh, again, our staff's unmatched and, and we're excited to get going here. What we expect from the players, we expect them to get dropped off come in the facility, get ready, pay attention, um, stay on task. You know, they're kids, they're gonna fool around a little bit, especially those eights and nines, but, um, or 16s and 17s. That said, they need to come in, pay attention. When it's time to go, it's time to go. Uh, they need to also know that their mom and dad is not around, so they're responsible to come in, find their coach, and get ready to work. The other expectation we have for them is to come in and work hard. Um, that's an expectation we we'll always have, but take advantage of this facility, take advantage of the coaching that they're gonna receive. They need to listen to every comment made to every player because they can learn from others. They can learn from feedback that's given to their teammates. So please tell them to pay attention. So when your son comes in, after you drop him off, they are now gonna be responsible for their equipment. They're also gonna be responsible to uh, apply some with itness. They have to be able to look around when they're in that dome and make sure they are not in the crossfire of another group playing catch, walking behind somebody playing catch because an overthrow uh, could hit them in the head. So we will direct them, we will pay it close attention to safety, but they have to pay attention themselves. Um, we will slow things down from the coaches end and explain, but they have to really pay attention to what's going on. Don't walk behind anybody with a baseball bat. Don't pick up a baseball next to a cage that's being you know, used and, and somebody's taking full swings. And also to add to that, they please label all of your son's equipment, shirts, jerseys, hats, bats, batting gloves. Put their initials on there by a, a marker that would show up. Uh, if, you have a, if your son has a, a darker glove, buy a silver marker. Buy something that you can identify their equipment. If we find equipment and it's left in the dome, we'll bring it over here. If it's left in the edge, we will have a lost and found, uh, a lightning specific lost and found this year. What we expect from our players throughout the season, not just during winter training, but as the spring season starts, we expect them to pay attention, to show great sportsmanship, and to be supportive of teammates, um, and communicate. We cannot have players on their cell phones in the dugouts. We cannot have players checking their cell phones in the dugouts cannot have parents bringing Gatorade to their sons, reaching around the dugout, looking in there and handing over drinks. 
we need parents to stay away from the dugout so your son can pay attention to the game, listen to their coach, and not get caught, I guess, not paying attention. So for them to stay on task, they need as little, uh, uh, you know, we need to eliminate the distractions. And believe it or not, as parents, we can be distractions. So there's also this level of growth that your son needs to develop so that as he moves up in the level of play, he can now listen to coaches' instructions, follow those instructions, stay on task, stay in the game, understand the count, understand the inning and the situation. So to do that, we ask that the cell phones are shut off or left home and not or left in the bag, but they do need to be off. I don't want to hear cell phones ringing during the game in dugouts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, food in the dugouts, things like that, that's going to be up to your coaches. I know between games and double headers, one of our program rules, players do not leave the complex. So when a parent you know, wants to take little Johnny down to Subway, which is two miles down the road in between games, that's not going to work. Because if he's late back to game two, and he was on my team, I wouldn't play him game two. And that's tough because maybe Johnny's a 10-year-old and he didn't drive and, and he's not the one that made the decision to go to Subway. So bring lunch ahead of time, pack a lunch. If you need to go to Subway because you didn't have any food at home and you need to buy it, leave in the fifth inning of game one and go get him a sandwich. So that's important. All players stay at the field in between games. What Maine Lightning expects from its parents. Our expectations of parents is to be supportive and positive all the time. I will acknowledge that's not always easy. We're all competitive, and some more than others. However, um, we want to lead by example here. So please remain positive. Please support your coaches. If you have any issues with them, set up a time, send them an email, talk to them. Not on the field, not before the game on the field, not after a game on the field or in the parking lot. The next day. That is a non-negotiable in this organization. If you have an issue with a coach, uh, the next day, send them an email. Um, if you want to post on social media, we encourage that, uh, but please keep it positive. And um, we, we take a lot of pride in, in the character that we've created for this program with, amongst umpires in the community and also uh, opponents throughout New England. So, um, you know, do your best to be positive at all times. I'd like to talk about playing time in the Mainlining Baseball program. Our policy is that every player plays one out of two baseball games on a weekend or on a play day. 95% of our play dates will have two games involved, unless they're at a tournament or playoffs. Otherwise, we schedule double headers. The, every player should play one out of two games. Now, if a game shortened because of a 10 run rule, that game's considered a full game. The run rule is out of our control. So we'll pay attention to that. I will encourage my coaches to track playing time at bats do their best to keep it um, in line. I, it's never going to be equal, and we don't promote playing times equal, but we will pay attention to it. If your son is not playing one out of two games on a weekend, I would expect an email from you. Uh, I would expect you to email your coach as well. And um, please don't approach your coach before a game or after a game at a facility or at a field. That needs to be done the next day by email uh, so it's, you know, emotions can settle. The new league that has been formed, the PBC merged with the EBL. Um, the new league is called the New Balance Select League. That 
merge is a merge that I'm very excited about. I know the top teams that we were looking forward to playing in the PVC, which last year because of COVID uh, was, a, was a challenge and didn't take place with a lot of the mass teams. They will be in this league. This league will have an elite division and then it will be broken down into, um, I believe, state divisions. So Maine will have its own league, its own New Balance Select League, and that will cut down on travel. Hopefully, the, it appropriately will match the competition level because in this program, we expect a high level of competition. And that's a non-negotiable for us. So, we're going to pay close attention to where we place our teams and what division they're in. Usually, when we place a team in the highest division, it has strong pitching and it has versatility, um, strong catching. Those the, the pitching position dictates a lot of where we place our teams. So, if a team is placed in D2, the lowest division, it doesn't necessarily mean the players are, are not good players. It means the pitching isn't where the upper level team is at. Uh, the pitching could be solid, throw strikes, but we may not have that that higher velocity pitcher with maybe a strikeout breaking ball uh, or, or two or three of those. So uh, just to you know to inform you, that's how we place as far as you know our our teams and the divisions that, that, that they go in. Um, the other piece to these two leagues merging is it allows us to play in-state rivals. It allows us to stay connected with the top programs out of state, down in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. We have great relationships with them and it's, it allows us for opportunities outside of Maine to share uh, platforms amongst the best programs and the programs that I feel um, are as strong as ours that, that have earned credibility with me. So again, we stay connected. Um, we continue to play a competitive schedule and we cut down on travel. So we're excited about the merge. Your son's coach may reach out and ask for volunteers uh, for things such as team communications, uh, travel itineraries, directions to the field, uh, between game, you know, snacks or whatever it may be. If you are interested in one of those roles, uh, great. We take all the help we can get. So start to think about that. I know some that, that I personally reach out for is I love a team mom or a team dad that if we do play a weekend series, we do laundry in the hotel, um, that parent will take charge and, and make sure that the kids' uniforms are washed. Um, we'll have team dinners, they'll organize that. There may be a, a group that does some fundraising, there'll be a parent leading that charge. Um, communication's the biggest one. If a game is canceled or delayed or the field is changed, I mean, this is all a fluid situation, not just not just with COVID, but if it's if we're expecting rain on any given day, the game could easily be pushed back an hour. Um, the game could be moved up from a Saturday to a Friday if both teams agree to play that day. Regardless, the communicator um, per team is is a very important role, and um, if that if you're up to helping out, great. Um, and you feel like you can work with that coach, terrific. You will add to the experience. You'll help the team, you'll help the coach, and you'll make the overall experience for 2021 a better experience. And we thank you for your, your help. The practice format for us on Sundays isn't really going to change a whole lot. Now this is going to be a fluid situation depending on what the state could say. So there could be some adjustments that we have to make. Um, but in a typical Sunday practice, you can expect your son to be, if it's primary week with his primary position when we go into the dome, if it's secondary week working on his secondary position 
uh, for the first 10 to 12 weeks, which is very, very similar to what we did last year. As we break down and get further and further into the practices, we're going to start to implement more team type practices where they'll be able to do pickoffs and rundowns and double cuts and cutoffs and, and such forth uh, that, we, that we need to do from a team standpoint. So overall, our, our development plan is to start with the individual basis, give our guys time to get back in to the flow of baseball, to get swings, to make sure we're taking the right steps so we don't have any injuries early on, so that we're not skipping anything from a development standpoint. We understand that every player is coming in with a different background. Some players have played straight through. Some guys haven't picked up a ball uh, since July. Safety is going to be one of our biggest concerns. So please, please reiterate to your players and our coaching staff and our staff here at the edge will help with this, but please let them know we don't throw baseballs unless directed. We don't pick up bats and swing them outside of the cage. We need to make sure that there's nobody standing behind us or beside us when we're swinging bats or throwing. We need to make sure that we're spaced out. Again, my coaching staff will help us with that, but it certainly goes a long ways when, when the players can take care of that stuff on their own. The ordering process is going to be a little bit different this year. We've subcontracted with New Balance. It is going to be completely out of our hands. It's very similar to soccer travel or basketball travel for those of you who do that. Everything is going to be online. There's going to be a mandatory package, which includes the uniforms. Um, we will provide hats and either a BP jacket, sweatshirt, short sleeve hoodie for the players. And then we will have additional items. Again, this is all through New Balance this year. It's a new contract that we went with feel like New Balance is one of the top companies out there and we're very fortunate enough to have a contract with them.